Houston Rockets start fast, hold off late surging Utah Jazz Houston the league leading muscle memory that was missing for much of the first two weeks of these playoffs for the Houston Rockets made an appearance just in time for the start of the Western Conference semifinals. The sweet shooting team that rolled through the NBA regular season to the tune of a franchise best 65 wins, finally showed up, for a half, at least. The lockdown defense on the perimeter and back end, the showtime gamesmanship of both James Harden and Chris Paul, it was all there from the start. Now if Mike D'Antoni could just get his crew to keep it up for four straight quarters instead of a half or the three quarters and five games of their first round series that he deemed satisfactory. Because when it's all clicking the way it did early in the Rockets 110-96 Game 1 lip-busting of the Utah Jazz here Sunday at Toyota Center, there is no confusion as to who and what these Rockets believe themselves to be. Scary, is the way Harden described it afterwards. Yes. Things got sort of interesting late, after the Jazz woke up and started chewing into the Rockets' 27-point cushion. D'Antoni said he started sweating when the lead dwindled to 11 in the fourth quarter. He said he was sweating, with every dazzling move Jazz rookie Donovan Mitchell made to get himself or a team made a shot. Even sent Harden back into the game three minutes earlier than usual. It was a total game until halftime, D'Antoni said as he's still trying to get his team to put together a full 48-minute effort. Obviously we came out ready to roll from the get-go, D'Antoni said. Halftime happened, and we didn't have a lot of the juice we should have had. Obviously, we were ready to roll from the get-go. They came off a tough series and we had to take advantage of it. They had some dead legs and we came out indeed but there's so much emotion and you get in the game and we're up 27 or up 24 and you kind of let down and it's hard to get it back. Give them credit, they kept fighting. We did what we were supposed to do and obviously we're happy, but we can do better. Better than having Harden or Paul on hand to answer every one of the Jazz's potentially momentum-shifting play with one of their own. Sure. How much better? That's the real question. What's the ceiling for a team that has used this formula the Rockets have used all season? The formula that set them on this perch atop the postseason heap, the one that has folks in this town dreaming about watching Rockets basketball into late June for the first time in generations. Once again, I think this team offensively, thus, we're just different, Harden said trying to describe how this team goes from 0 to 60 in a flash against one of the league's elite defenses. We've seen so many different defenses throughout the year that it prepared us for this moment, whether it's Rudy Gobert back at the rim or team switching. We've seen it all, pretty much all year, so we watch film and we figure out how we can create three-point shots and create opportunities for each other and we just go out there and play our butt off. So, it looked a little choppy at times the past few weeks, that's to be expected when you've been as good as the Rockets have been during parts of this campaign. Trying to find that groove again has proved to be tougher than imagined. D'Antoni is doing his best to ring the alarm for his team since March, running them through all of the fire drills, without altering the threat level prematurely. My job is to nitpick and try to get better when we're not good, he said. We only scored 46 points in the second half, so that's not good. Pace wasn't where it should be. Defensively, we had some breakdowns. We had 15 turnovers that gave them 22 points and at halftime there were like 5 turnovers. We got careless and all that came from the sloppiness in general. Those are the things that we can control. That's what makes them good, is that we can play a lot better than this. Still, D'Antoni could use some outside help making his points. The Jazz stole D'Antoni's legitimate shot at injecting some necessary emotion and urgency into his team by upsetting the Oklahoma City Thunder and their OKC3 of reigning Kia MVP Russell Westbrook, Paul George, and Carmelo Anthony in the first round. Harden going up against his former teammate and the man whose title he's likely to assume next month would have provided all sorts of on-court fireworks from two of the league's most dynamic players. They'll have to settle instead for whatever Fire Mitchell and the Jazz can generate without their starting point guard available for the foreseeable future. Ricky Rubio left with a hamstring injury in the first quarter of the Game 6 win over the Thunder and isn't expected back before Game 5 of this series, provided it lasts that long. In truth be told, 
the Game 1 script was already written before Sunday's opening tip. The Jazz showed up here spent, physically and emotionally, some 36 hours after that roller coaster series clinching win over the Thunder Friday night. The fact that they couldn't seem to match the Rockets' energy and precision in the first half was no surprise. It's a quick turnaround, obviously there is some fatigue but that wasn't the reason for the performance tonight, Mitchell said, pushing back on the narrative that his team didn't show up here with the requisite energy and effort needed to win. We landed at 5 a.m. in San Antonio and played the same day and won. We've been through tough times as a team we've gone through it. We really didn't know what to expect, we really didn't know game plan wise and we figured it out in the second half. I don't think it was so much of a fatigue factor. What couldn't be debated was the fact that one of the best defensive teams in the league could be so easily manipulated. Jazz center Rudy Gobert is the likely frontrunner for the Defensive Player of the Year award that will be handed out in late June. But he was missing in action as the Rockets built that early lead before halftime. Harden and Paul took turns exploiting their mismatches on offense, finding open shots for themselves and their teammates at will. They got whatever they wanted, whenever they wanted it. They forced the Jazz to pick which poison to digest against the league's most diabolical and devastating point guard duo. And yet it still feels like we haven't seen these Rockets pushed to the limit in this postseason. Their Game 3 loss in Minnesota didn't require crunch time or reaction with the outcome decided before then. We haven't seen a team capable of making them figure out how to counter a consistent attack that forces them out of that comfortable default setting they've operated on for months now. Jazz coach Quinn Snyder and his staff have just two practice days to come up with wrinkles they can add to the mix, particularly for Harden, before Wednesday's Game 2. He's a special player. Snyder said after Harden smoked his team for 41 points, including a 7-4-12 shooting performance from beyond the three-point line, to go along with his eight rebounds and seven assists. It's hard to give credit to all the things he does. He just impacts the game in so many ways. You have to just have to make it harder for him in so many facets. And it requires your whole team to guard him because he's capable of finding any weakness in any given situation. A good player can see their man in the help, a better player can see three things and he sees everything. That's what makes him so unique, is that he has the ability to complete all of those plays. And we still have to go out and compete and make it hard on him. But I don't think there is any mystery to what a good player he is, and you can see it night after night.